Hey everyone, it's Tammy. I'm noticing I'm a little bit nervous today because I'm going to get a little bit more clinical on you, um, but it's really, I feel like, an important component to the work that I do. Um, what I want to say is that every health issue we have, whether it be um, diabetes, high blood pressure, depression, no matter what you come up with that your doctor has diagnosed you with, on some level they are all related. Um, and it all goes back to the neurochemistry that I believe is the, the biggest factor as to why we have so many physical issues. Now, by neurochemistry, I mean neurotransmitters and hormones. So I have two cases today that I want to briefly describe to you and how I'm working with them. Does this apply to you? It's hard to say. Um, I'm not going to say this is a one-size-fits-all again. And um, this is very customized work. But the more familiar you become with this level of work, the easier it's going to be to come become for you to actually um, address it for yourself. So in this first case, I had a 59-year-old woman contact me with psoriasis. Turns out it is plaque psoriasis. She mentioned she has vitiligo. She takes a medication for the psoriasis and has undergone laser treatment, none of which have halted the recurrence of the plaques. She asked me if I could help her. Well, the answer, of course, is yes. I can absolutely help with the elimination of the plaques. However, I wouldn't be doing her any great service other than the fact that she was getting relief, but we're not addressing the root of the problem. Additionally, she didn't provide me with enough information on the, on the onset, so I had to inquire as to what other issues she might be dealing with and if there were, in fact, any other medications which, of course, the answer was yes. She's taking a medication for um, low thyroid. She's taking a medication for um, high blood pressure. Um, the thyroid is a really good indicator of endocrine imbalance. She also indicated that she takes an exceptional amount of vitamin D, which happens to be included in the medication she's taking for the psoriasis because... There's a couple of aspects to psoriasis that they're not really, you know, they, 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 it varies between people. And I say that because, well, number one, it's a case. No matter what health condition you're dealing with, as far as I'm concerned, there is a spectrum. Um, it really depends on what gene, genetic adaptations you are actually being handed. Um, so she has... Um, a medication that has vitamin D in it and also is affecting the glucocorticoids. It's, it's actually got it's their glucocorticoids that they're giving her because her body is um, not making them. Well, that tells me right there there's vitamin D issues because she's taking it. She's low on vitamin D. There's a recurrence of the plaque. Um, the glucocorticoids are needed to um, help produce healthy tissue. Now, how, do they, how does the body produce this? Well, it takes the fats that we consume, and it pair, when it breaks the fats down, then it pairs it with um, sugars and proteins for tissue development. This is for skin, for your teeth, for your bones, muscles. All tissue development comes from glucocorticoids. So she's taking a medication for that, um, which means either she's not making them well enough, or, and at this point, she could potentially be hindered because she's taking them. Now she also has a thyroid medication. So she's, begin, she's being given a synthetic thyroid um, hormone. Um, and we'll get into the vitamin D relationship to that here in a moment. She's also taking a high blood pressure medication. That is, a, that is an angiotensin receptor blocker. Now angiotensin is another hormone. So what I hear in all of that is vitamin D receptor problems. Um, vitamin D, you know, when there are adaptations on, on the vitamin D receptor, you can have any number of health issues. And my guess is that hers is pretty significant because she has, I'm going to, if I were to list four, she's 75% of, the, you know, she's got three of the four. So one of the first things we see with vitamin D receptor issues 
is um, low is is an in an, an impact on dopamine levels. Well, dopamine is a neurotransmitter. And the next thing we see is um, thyroid problems. Okay, well she has that. Another one we see is autoimmune disorders. Well, she obviously has that because she's got the um, the vitiligo. At the same time, vitiligo um, is linked to thyroid issues. So as such as Hashimoto's, which is another autoimmune disorder. It also affects the pancreas. Um, I don't know that she has pancreas issues, um, but I'm going to say she does. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to recount that and say, yes, yeah, she does. And why do I say that? Even though she doesn't have diabetes, because the sugars that she is in the carbohydrates she's consuming are not being broken down properly to be paired with the fats. So there's any combination of things happening here, but all of it relates back to the vitamin D. That's the biggest one. And getting this endocrine system back into balance. Now, what I find absolutely fascinating and miraculous about this um, is the fact that the body is doing everything that it can. And that's the thing that I want to emphasize here as well, is the reframing of the way we look at health issues. Okay, so in her case... She's got an endocrine imbalance. And so the body did everything it knew to do, everything it could potentially do to restore balance. Now, oftentimes we call that a healing crisis. When you're working with somebody who works with natural remedies, they'll talk about a healing crisis. A healing crisis is something the body goes into the moment you give it, um, you, you give it exactly what it needs to help heal itself. You see that, um, you'll see a flare-up in rashes. You'll see a flare-up, um, you'll, you'll see all kinds of flares. And people have a tendency to go, oh, wait a minute, that's not, that's not what I wanted. Because we're so accustomed to taking a pill or putting on an ointment or something that alleviates the symptoms. And the symptoms are just that. They're symptoms of chemical imbalances. So in her case, she has psoriasis. Um, the body is doing what it can given what it has to restore balance. And so what is she seeing? She's seeing, seeing a healing crisis. These plaques are flaring up. All right. What she wants is to get rid of it. So I had to find out that the whole picture for a couple of reasons. One, I need to make sure there's no contraindications with the oils and the medications that she's taking. These, there's a mechanism that these um, medications take um, that the um, researchers and scientists find and they employ that in the body. They also have, um, they are also metabolized in a particular way through the liver and depending on what other, what other things you introduce, you can actually create even bigger problems within the body. So it's really important to know what level of interactions are possible. Um, if any. So I needed to make sure of that. And I also wanted to see how the psoriasis and why the psoriasis is manifesting. And what I got down to is the fact that there's vitamin D and endocrine. So now I can actually treat her holistically. So what I'm doing is I actually created a salve for her that is going to work directly on the plaques. And then I created a separate blend that is going to help restore balance to um, the endocrine system, number one, by activating that vitamin D receptor. Now, this country, the United States, is epidemically low on vitamin D, and a lot of people will tell you that there's, you know, that you can go outside in the sunshine or you can, like, take therapeutic dosages of vitamin D, but it doesn't really do much for you. Um, I have uh, several colleagues here in Santa Fe, doctors that um, have admitted, openly admitted to me, they really don't know how to affect that vitamin D receptor. And I find that a little disappointing because the research that I have, which comes out of Germany in this case, um, has demonstrated certain plant constituents that actually do, in fact, activate that vitamin D receptor. So that's one of the things, that's the primary culprit. <laughs> the primary oil that I started with in the second blend, and then, um, and again, I'll get to what I'm giving her, 
but in, I just want to highlight the fact that the salve is more about skin and cell regeneration and skin restoration. And the blend itself is working on the endocrine system. It's working on the immune system. And it's also affecting the vitamin D receptor and the use of cholesterol. So the other thing that I did for her actually was provide her with some nutritional recommendations. Um, why? Because the oils do not contain nutrients. They contain the instructions for the DNA, but they do not contain the nutrients. The body actually needs the nutrients. And yes, she is taking supplements, but I don't know what kind. And I don't necessarily want to um, rely just on supplements. I want her to eat specific foods. I call this intentional eating. So there's certain things that I wanted her to ingest. And I also wanted her to get on some digestive enzymes. Um, for the fact that she, um, actually there's the, the kind I recommended actually also include um, probiotics because I really want to help her bowel health and digestive health. And I want her to be able to assimilate the proteins, carbohydrates, and fats because if I were to break it down for everyone, I, the biggest problem that most of us have is not um, getting in the vitamin C, the vitamin A, the, all the vitamin Bs. It's not the vitamins and minerals that we're lacking. We, God knows we take enough of those. It's the fats, the proteins, and the carbohydrates that we're not assimilating properly. And these are all being assimilated on a cellular level. So it's necessary to be able to help the body break those down. So digestive enzymes with a probiotic is very good. Um, I'm not concerned about her in the area of being over fermented. She's not producing, she's not assimilating her sugars properly. So with that said, I also put her on maca for a very short window of time. Um, maca can have adverse effects if you go the opposite direction. I also made sure that she is working with, and I'll get back to that in a minute, making sure that we are working closely with her physician with monitoring her thyroid because what we're about to do is going to send this endocrine system in the opposite direction and I need somebody watching her medication so that we can begin to make the adjust proper adjustments because it, I'm not a physician. I'm in no position to take anybody off of any medication. Um, however, that's why it's very important that I know that somebody is watching this on the other end as far as what her blood levels are doing. So back to the maca. Maca works on the entire endocrine system. You probably have heard of it. It's a root that comes from South America. It has a great history with regards to um, warriors, um, stamina uh, in battle. But they've done further research on it, and it's it's the the effects on our body are just extraordinary. And I particularly like it for um, well, a couple of reasons. In this particular case, it is for the endocrine system. Um, so I put her on that for six weeks max. If I we keep in touch, and if I have any indication that her thyroid is going the opposite direction and she's getting um, really agitated and sleepless, then we're going to have to stop sooner. But I told her six weeks with the maca. Um, I also put her, um, had her get involved with eating walnuts and avocados for the good fats. They're also going to help support her liver function. Um, now, with that, the next thing I did with the oils. So the salve is actually in a base of neem, rose hips, and um, I actually use coconut oil um, because coconut oil is 50% lauric acid and works really well as an immune, Im, immunomodulant. So um, even though if you get it through the skin and it's going to help heal that. So it's got neem oil, it has rosehip oil, and it has coconut oil. Then those are the carriers. And then I used um, rosemary verbone. And um, that's an important one. It's not just rosemary. Rosemary has several different types. And it's very important to know which one you're using. Um, if, with the verbone, it's very good for skin tissue. And um, 
it doesn't have a neurotoxin in it like other rosemaries do. So I selected that one for her. I um, put some everlasting in there, which is, a, um, again, a, a, it um, has an analgesic effect. It also is a very wonderful um, skin regeneration. I used carrot seed oil, which is going to support the liver, and it's actually going to help with skin regeneration as well. And the other one I used in there is yarrow, white yarrow, which is actually blue in color. Um, because of its effects on the cells uh, of the tissue, of the skin, sorry. Again, we're back to skin regeneration. Um, but it also works directly with the lymphatic system because she's got a lot of scarring going on, and so the body needs to be able to flush itself. And with all of the um, changes that are occurring now in the introduction of the oils, the body is going to be rewired to actually begin to detoxify itself, and the lymph system is in a, a crucial aspect to the detoxification process. So as the body readjusts itself, we need to be able to keep that lymph moving. So that's what's in the salve. As far as the blend that's supporting her endocrine system, the cholesterol usage, the vitamin D usage, and the immune system, that particular blend contains myrrh, pedigrain, Moroccan thyme, again these are all due to the constituents, and the other one is um, vetiver. Now vetiver is very good for the um, circulation. Um, it also has, I'm also looking for constituents that contain, um, oils that contain carvacrol, 1,8-Cianol, Myrcene, um, the uh, Limonene, the, uh, there's a Pinene is the other one, and Borneol, pardon me, Borneol. So like I said, these are all working for cholesterol, immunomodulant, not an immunostimulant. I'm looking for an immunomodulant. The... Um, I'm trying to remember, the, the psoriasis medication actually is an immunosuppressant, okay? I don't want to suppress her immune system. I don't want to stimulate her immune system. I'm trying to help the body restore balance to the immune system. So that's what is in that particular oil. Again, I will reiterate. So the, bl um, the, the blend contains pedigrain, myrrh, vetiver, and Moroccan thyme. And um, again, this doesn't necessarily go for everybody. That is actually 10% dilution and a jojoba base. So at no point is she going to be getting a, a straight essential oil. It's too much for the body. Less is more. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing for this particular case. If you have any questions about this or if, it, if any of this sounds familiar to you or you have a similar situation, please either email me or comment below. Depending on what you ask below, I may ask you to just email me directly. Um, the other case I wanted to point out is in the area of, um, of all things, my father. Now, my dad is not a smoker. He has never been a smoker. Um, he was recently diagnosed with both, well, a number of, yeah, both COPD and... Um, he has COPD, he has kidney issues, um, and he has Parkinson's. So what's fascinating about that for me is um, our family has historically had a history of addictions. Okay, so addiction is related to dopamine. And um, additionally, Parkinson's, as we all know, is a low dopamine um, condition. So low dopamine. So what does that mean? Well, that means you don't have enough in the brain and you don't have enough to make norepinephrine. See, dopamine is converted to norepinephrine. And norepinephrine is needed for um, clarity of mind. It helps us to focus. And it also helps us to take a deep breath. Like when we wake up in the morning and we yawn, that's actually coming from a dopamine conversion into norepinephrine. So I'm not surprised that my father has both COPD and Parkinson's because it's hard, you know he doesn't have enough dopamine to produce 
um, the norepinephrine that's necessary for deep breathing. And deep breathing is um, a form of detoxifying the body. And he's not able to do that. And the other factor with the dopamine is dopamine play, um, weighs heavily into our uh, renal system, as does serotonin. So again, these conditions, I'm not surprised. Um, am I treating my father? Well, let's just say I would love to, but he is on quite the cocktail of medication. And um, he's at a point where it's not advisable. I mean, I, I just wouldn't do it. Um, all I can do at this point is love him for it. I mean, I would take on other cases, but he's just too emotionally close to me. So therefore, I'm not working with him. Um, the other factor about norepinephrine that I wanted to say is, as I mentioned, it's dopamine converts to norepinephrine. And... Um, you have um, ADHD, a lot of ADHD people who have been diagnosed with it are put on a you know, particular medication that's a norep norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, which means it keeps the norepinephrine in the brain to help people focus. Um, you see that a lot in autism, and, um, and I work a lot with autistic children. Um, there is a dopamine norepinephrine issue there. And the funny thing about it is, is I've seen and I've listened, sat in on a lot of lectures and there's still a lot of studies to be done on schizophrenia and autism. And there's a correlation between the two. Definitely both of them are linked to um, the neurotransmitter imbalances. However, how it shows up in one person isn't the way it shows up in everyone. Um, in another talk, I mentioned um, estrogen in, um, in autism. It's funny, I worked with so many different people and you know, I, at one point I wanted to treat them all the same and you absolutely cannot because every system is different. Do they deal with hormones and neurotransmitters? You better believe it. But you have to understand exactly what is going on with them systemically in order to address them holistically. And pumping them full of supplements is not the answer. Um, a lot of these kids won't even swallow pills. So it's really necessary to understand your client and get a full picture and realize that one symptom, one diagnosis such as ADHD um, or autism, they are related. Parkinson's and COPD, there is a relationship there. Diabetes, um, let me back up a minute, depression and high blood pressure, absolutely a, a correlation there because some of your blood pressure medications are um, fluid pills and um, are diuretics and the dopamine is necessary for sodium um, and urine regulation output so sodium regulation and urine output so that's the reason oh and by the way my dad has high blood pressure so there we go back to the dopamine. So these are how these things are related and really understanding what it is you've got going on um, and getting really in touch with your body or your client's body and understanding them as a whole system is really going to give you the key factors into how to help them overcome the root of the problem. Thank you and have a really wonderful evening.